I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men. Remember my teaching? Yes. And that there will always be a demand by Satan to give your soul in exchange for material things. So it's not just that your soul, listen carefully, it's not just that your soul is given to the devil, but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies. And I gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies. Satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together. When your pocket begins to rise, he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down. Are we together? And that has been the system. So people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money. But in the name of Jesus, there is a generation of men and women rising by the Spirit of God who will prosper even as their souls prosper. And so I told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of Tyre, Satan himself, sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth. And we're going to look at the second aspect today. And I'm just going to talk to you two words, basically, that we'll be teaching um, along those lines. And then God will grant us grace. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1. When God made man, he gave a command. And the first word that man heard from God, according to verse 28, And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful. Everybody say it after me. Be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish the earth. Number four, subdue it. That these four dimensions is what makes for dominion. That for the sins to at any point command dominion, all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences. You must have the ability to be fruitful. You must have the ability to multiply. You must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue. I'm not talking about all of those dimensions. I just want to connect something. I did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful. Please, you need to get it. It's very, very important because I want to start building from there. God is a God of increase. God is a God that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful. And um, when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful, please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children. The womb. When God told man be fruitful, he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery, and by so doing, multiply the earth. Number two, the mind. Be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful. Number three, your hands. Be fruitful. Your hands must also be fruitful. Number four, be fruitful. Your mouth, your lips must also be fruitful. Just follow me carefully. And then lastly, your spirit. 
So when God spoke to man and said, be fruitful, he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman. He was speaking to all of these dimensions of man. That the womb be fruitful. The mind be fruitful. The hands be fruitful. The mouth be fruitful. The spirit be fruitful. Are we together? The fruit of the womb is the child. The fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity. Please write. When the womb gives birth, you call the child or you call the fruit a child. When the mind or your thoughts give birth, you call the fruit ideas. When the hands give birth, you call the child work or accomplishments. When the mouth gives birth, you call it words. When the spirit gives birth, you call it character. And so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agreed that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together we rounded off in the last meeting with the daniel where daniel the three Hebrew boys came and said, Oh, king, we will not bow. We know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol, but we have made up our minds that our God is able to deliver us. Are we together? And so it is possible that we conquer the spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints. And I want to just guide you very briefly. Tonight, I'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity. The power of productivity. This is a very scarce teaching in the body of Christ and even in Africa. The power of productivity. Submitting to the government of Christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of Christ to the saints. There is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is. The name of that weapon is productivity. Say productivity. Please write this down. There is a difference between value and productivity. There is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity. Value talks of your inherent abilities. Value talks of your potentials. Value talks of your transactable skills. That means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value. But productivity is more than value. Are we together now? Just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded. The world is full of many valuable people, but in the face of economic hardship, even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need. Are we together now? It is important to be aware of value, but just camping at that realm of value 
is not enough to empower the saints. Please write this down. Productivity is the quality or the ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. I'll take it again. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. Never forget this, this definition. That productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful. Look up, please, everyone. While value talks of your inherent abilities, productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. It is not valuable people who are rewarded. It is productive people. Are we together? Please, you may write this down. Financial resources will always follow productivity, not necessarily value. Financial resources will always move the direction of productivity. Productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance. The ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity. So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory, economic victory, is productivity. Any man, any woman, any church, any organization that is not productive will be poor. It's a law. Please listen carefully. Any man, any woman, any church, any business, any organization, that fails to be productive. There is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality. Before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive, let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality. Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men he expects that they increase. In the parable of the talent, Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about three men who were given talents. One, five talents. Listen carefully. The other two talents and then the last, a talent. And the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more, increased. The other one with two went and made two more. But the one with one talent returned back and said, you are a hard man. You reap where you didn't sow. And Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word, unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you. 
wicked and unprofitable servant. Africa has been plagued, and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality. Are we together now? So the, the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average African and worst of it all to an average believer. The subject of productivity is not taught believers. We, we have been trained to ignore productivity. Let me tell you, I think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something. The Bible says give and it will be given to you. That's the law. It didn't say what you give is what must be given. But until you give, nothing should be given back to you. So if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you, it's amazing, my brothers and my sisters, how many of us, many of us even seated here, just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs. Just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Productivity. So the average person thinks consumption. Give me. Let me eat. It has finished. Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say, find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual, all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wants the entire globe saved. And he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not up or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. The greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture. Amazing how you can take a seed. Look up, everybody. You plant that seed. Are we together now? And then you watch it. That orange seed, just give it a little time, grows. The orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough. Are you seeing that now? Yes. In spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds, it has the stamina. And a few months after maturity, you begin to see oranges everywhere. Watch this. You will pluck the oranges. And after a while, it will start again. And you will pluck some more. 
and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people. The trees were there before they were born, yet they will still eat of it. That's productivity. Are we together now? No man who is productive becomes poor. No matter what Babylon wants to do or not, no matter what devil, no matter what charm, what cause, productivity is not an idea for success. It's a weapon. Productivity is a weapon. A man of God who is productive will never have empty pews. A church, a ministry that is productive will never go down. A business that is productive will never see shape. The key is productivity. The key is not wishing. The key is not sentiments. The key is productivity. The ability to convert anything small to become big productivity. The ability to introduce a multiplier factor. I am productive. Who do I use? Come. I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness, that he comes as a naive young gentleman and have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come, will be ready for empty pews. The days of solidarity based on tribe, based on all this, over. The determining factor for impact is productivity. We come from the same village, will soon be a joke. We have the same auntie. You are my elder brother, I'm your younger brother. No. People are desperate. He said that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills. And the people will say, let us flow. Although upwards, but let us flow to that mountain. Are we together? Thank you. What does productivity involve? Let's discuss this quickly. Number one, the first key to productivity is health exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life, to God, whatever it is. I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman. One testimony you were all laughing around. When the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence, you, you, you can see the, don't feel bad, my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the Spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said health 
exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person. He will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is taking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot. God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the Me Too belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle beltan, average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure, exposure, exposure. The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, he will translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see. In any case, I need you to comprehend. That's what he did to Abraham. He kept telling Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Abraham said, amen, like we're saying. And God said, I can't work with you. You are, you are empowering, delaying your life. And then one time he said, Abraham, come out. You have checked around and there is nothing that looks like. Lift up your eyes. See. Count the stars. He had been looking at the stars, but he never tried counting them. I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three. Oh, God. One, two, three, four, five. One. God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I have, I've planted something in you that you can now relate with. It says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. But somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit down and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. And anything good come out of Nazareth. And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like, say, Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking, is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity. So you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you. And then they tell you this is a young man that owns it. And subconsciously, your mind continues to bank in challenges 
until you don't know when you sit down and say, Lord, there has to be something about my life. But in this environment, no matter what level you are, you are still a champion. You see how bad it is? Before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money. They say, no problem. You are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, sir, he's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let's, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed, godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted. But many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, there's nothing you can, you just, you just think he says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy. A ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people. The possibility that you see before you is what you become. That's what Jacob did to the animals. He simulated what he wanted them to become. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed, loves God. And you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithe. You have the opportunity to see his prayer. And in it, his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. You will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there's cucumber and there's carrot, but there is Canaan. Mama, there is Canaan. Let's trust God for grace. And in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. May you be the one to lift your family out of this. Land. Please sit down. Exposure. Exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart. Are we together? You never knew. Mm -hmm. That it was possible to pay a child school fees beforehand. Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. 
It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get kind of peace for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what would discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there, but extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you sat on store. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JC is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching, to manage your complex. Just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You feel because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had held. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but... I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? He, his whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he harmed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the seat. And it was terrible, especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight, to fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now, please. Don't you ever see my father, and my father is a born-again, loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? 
Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't mm -hmm. want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. 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 It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to kill. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us, planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. And this is where the internet becomes a blessing. You don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself, but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the U.S. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there, but God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman and God can just lead you to one 15 minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies. Everybody say exposure. There's no excuse in our world today for remaining small. Even financially, there is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. 
there is a system of exposure. Are we together? Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon. As God is exposing you and exposing your mind, you are fighting a warfare that you do not know. It's a warfare for your destiny. While you are exposing yourself, you are exposing it for your children, for your children's children. And then number two, creativity. Write this down. What is creativity? Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, imaginations, and dreams into reality. Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, your imaginations, and your dreams into reality. Hmm. I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality, full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu wabohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says, The Spirit of God hovered on the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me if you will conquer the king of fire, and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. The ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask or imagine. The word there is imagine. It says, according to the power that worketh in us. Creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I'm not being insulted, but you ask a graduate a simple question, just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures, change five to seven, change this to, and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses, that's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. 
there is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire, the word inspire does not just mean to climb. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of the magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the Spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom, but let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah, telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new. You go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people and about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The, the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, Usually, they will make sure that as much as possible, they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people, one of their most successful products, but with that, many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient. Every businessman does business for profits. I hope you know bank is business. Bank is not government property. It's somebody's business. Look at graduates now all around. There is nothing because there is a system. And please listen to what I'm saying. Because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources, they will both suffer and the children will suffer. Listen for the sake of your children. My brothers and my sisters, don't listen just for yourself. Let us rid ourselves of this selfishness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take very long before your child comes. And then the reality will dawn on you. And while that is happening, Satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high. It's a double-edged sword. So that whatever direction you come from, you will be attacked. 
Listen. The average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30,000. Listen carefully. Am I telling the truth? There are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know, no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and this and that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000. And everybody saying, oh, yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry. Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? Now, I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry. You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing... Remember, you are born again. Remember, you are filled with the Spirit of God. And Satan says, exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithes. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pleasure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. My brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee, his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions on common manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself. To sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that is not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. 
I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you, when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and, the, you know, the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you received. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And he said, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be. This is, this is where, sincerely speaking, I have a little challenge with we men of God. We continue to receive and collect from people, but never empower them. It's wickedness. It's a scam. Do you know how available people will be when they are financially free? Financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life. Most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh's we release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, shine and see Yahweh. Yahweh. Hey. Yahweh. Yahweh. Hey. Please sit down. Sit down. Shalabarando Sekete Brahasadabala. Creativity. 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 That God will anoint people to be creative. Do new things or old things in new ways. That you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller. But there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city. By only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we use the blood of fools. But Jesus came. And showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing 
He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity, the grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah won, just like I'm warning. Noah won, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it, that the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the way, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked, I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen. To Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yeah, there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the when you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Junior says, Daddy says, you cannot provide. You are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you will have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child. In the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at expense of the gospel, at expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit-inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bad solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now, 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extra moral lesson. It's a VIP extra moral lesson. And it started like two children three children, right in house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character. Character. And then she would play koinonia messages too. These children were changing in remarkable ways. And the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on this one. You force it. It's right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind. Something on your mind. And change your life. Change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's cloth, they wrote $400. Then his, his eye, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote zero dollars. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you 
that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything up. It's not only power to shake. No. Oh. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your hand on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakakoske parakata. From heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray. Please pray. Saprande katala koto sasiata. Embre kate kato shalaka pros kate bahasarias. Saprande skata paru kato sedebelekos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people. Creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen. When you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level, whoever's level you solve their problem. That's the, the rev you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for the kings to come. There are kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing, he saw a mowing machine, machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, Sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have uh, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people, and then they sell flowers. Flowers, they, to the point that he even imports certain varieties. 
from a crying judgment to a praying one. Something comes from heaven and changes your life. For as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better, my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman, a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products, health drinks, completely organic, 100%. Because the need to live long and live healthy. You see, when you are poor, it's not a concern. Because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this. But by the time God helps you small, you find out that at a level is a serious concern. And this, this woman started selling health drinks. And, you know, beautifully packaged. And only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents. Let them take it. Let them be blessed. The goal is not far from you. When the spirit of creativity comes, you will see what others don't see. Anything can bless. It depends on how it is served. Are we together? There's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north, is a drink, a local you know, drink that we take a lot. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it, even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness. Rebuke excuses. There has to be a way out of it. The warfare that is executed through creativity. Only creative men can survive upon that mountain. There is a way out. There is a way out. There has to be a way out of struggling. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. The ability to standardize your results. Competence. The ability to standardize your results, maintain quality, predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know. If you're a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. Competent is a product of mastery. The mastery of the laws that govern that operation. Predictable competence. Listen to me. When your results are not standardized, kings will not come to you. Kings do not come to a fluctuated results. Stability for kings mean mastery. So when you stabilize and standardize your results, whether spiritually, intellectually, or otherwise, you call the attention of kings. The leaders in any industry are men who have standardized results. You cannot keep fluctuating forever. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a career person, 
there must be a level of standardized results. Everybody say competence. Be strict on yourself. Set a high standard on yourself. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Just because you do something small, challenge yourself. Think global, think global, think global. You can start small, but let your mind be global. Are we together? I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees, and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day, and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification. And insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's clothes today. You will walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually. But insist. Insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. For one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I, was, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you, when you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Commons. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people God is doing something great in Zaria. Commons. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. Know that the people will never be the same because the message is powerful and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your result. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man, a very, very big and wealthy man. And then he was encouraged to do a good job and 
I'm sure he may be listening now. And when he sold the clothes for that man, from that, that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is a dick. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, uh, what they call this people that, makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist? Who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price. And the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing? You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, oh God. Now that the job is not coming or what I read, no. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced. And that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life. This is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place where your life is changed listen some of us our parents may have failed but turned them into a success by being successful so that they can say, my assignment was to give birth to you. And since I gave birth to you, I may have failed in every other thing. But because you arrived successfully, your success has turned me back to a success. The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names, coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a curse. Being in the north is not a curse. Being in Nigeria is not a curse. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be issue. Not moral support. That people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came, I am alive. That was Thank you 
for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate you. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a salmon. You can stand on their grave and live in He even his productivity. Ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen. Turn your ideas to products and services. You are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. Once in a while, I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen, one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge us. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, Give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, please, let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I say I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision, put your books back in order because you are walking away from very sick. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. They don't mention Jesus. Say, That's all I know. 
And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We you raise your banner high? We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Okay. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy the unemployment, men and women, who defy mediocrity and your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and you will pass and sit on that mountain and call forth nations to come and they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray and just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us, and then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be cosmetic. Pray. Sabarakata Senemakata. The NS expectation of creation. I waited the manifestation of source. No excuse for poverty. No excuse for failure. No excuse for mediocrity. Lord, I cancel those excuses tonight. I cancel those excuses. I cancel those excuses. I have a mind that thinks. Have a spirit that can think. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty that made men of understanding. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to cause the spirit of laziness, laziness, physical laziness, mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. 
Outside pray, inside pray. Ghosts following online pray. The sea shall be mighty upon head. The sea shall be mighty upon head. Anabarandas kabana kandu shebra de katas. Le kata parusa sekete marakata. Empra kata parato sotro prenyates. Sabra de second de leva karyadamos. Rakatna papa kata parata sadabaka hoch. Empra kata le kata parato satekete. Rakata kata kata balalabos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification, but I also believe in mastery. You are going to pray, Lord, what is that one thing? That area you want me to be a master in. Incontestable, unacquable. Reveal to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, is it agriculture? Lord, is it finance? Is it in my career? Is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, O oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes. Woman thou art loose. One idea from heaven. He wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed, turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an, that was invented away from Africa is working like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I'm not pleased with Due respect to the medical council and all the medical people. These are my personal opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry, nor am I speaking on behalf of the nation. I'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it. There is a cure for cancer. There is a cure for all these things. The only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems. And because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment that this, most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa. So an individual that rises like that will be fought over. But there are cures. Not one, not two. I have spoken personally with people that have these cures. Let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that will put upon my life that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever, that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. Please pray. Praise the Lord. We shine the lights of the land. 
We will raise your banner high, shine the light so bright. Hallelujah. Let this be the last prayer point and we are done for tonight. Take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth. Take my eyes. Don't run away from problems. Take my eyes. Show me, oh God, in life and destiny, where is the problem? Show me the Goliath that my throne is connected to. I'm not afraid to face that Goliath. Give it take time, but I will prevail. Lift your eyes and pray. Yes. Lift your voice and pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, make my eyes. Make my mind. Take me to the problems, the issue that I can solve, that bring me into my financial Sabbath, that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared with you, listen, I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed the seed into his life and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, Create a problem that only him can solve. You know, I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ. I said, I don't know if I like this kind of prayer. I mean, I don't like things that try to outshine people. I'm not that kind of person. And so what kind of prayer is this? But the man had prayed his prayer. But when I sat down, I thought about it. I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy. Listen to me. Your similarity... Mike Modoc says, create your comfort. It is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward. Nobody will pay you for being like another person. They will only reward you for being unique. There can be 20 of you in a city, but you can stand out. The same way there are millions of men of God across the earth, but there can be a unique imprint of God's grace upon your life. Are we together? Decree in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions, may that grace rest upon you. Let me pray it again. The grace that wakes people. When the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night, then the secret, there is a grace that taps men in the night and say, wake up, your destiny is about to rise. May that grace speak over your life. Yes. Listen to me. I decree and declare that every fear of failure, whatever is keeping you down, people will laugh at me if I fail. How can I take this step? I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. <laughs> for those of you honestly trusting God for capital, that you know that you have sincerely done your homework, you just need that push. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare, in a way you cannot explain, I channel resources to you. I channel resources from the ministry of destiny help us. I channel strange resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, your lifting will require a networking of like minds. I connect you to similar minds. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are already doing great things, but you just need the courage to scale up to a level 
that becomes enviable. Both the courage and the grace, I release it upon you now. Listen, there are some of you, God is calling to dimensions that people are going there. Because nobody has gone there and succeeded. I exempt you and I declare you will succeed. For some of you, this innovation will come in dreams. You will lie down to sleep and your whole sleep will be a dream. You will wake up and do exactly what you saw on Frostman. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from tonight. That between now and next week. That everybody under the sound of my voice. Must find an area in his life. Where you can channel energy to be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let me pray finally. Your soul will never go down because of money. Your work with God, your passion for the things of God, your sense of honor, your sense of submission, your, your sense of recognition of the authority of God will never deplete while you rise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you, you are going to hear touching testimonies from this prayer that I've prayed. It's true. Give Jesus praise. Father, we bless in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you can, stand on your feet, everyone, inside and outside. If you can, please be up standing on your feet. I want to pray for people who came here, some from within this town and some from outside this town. And you're saying, Apostle, I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus Christ. I've heard the things that you have said. I may not have come from a family that loved the Lord, but I sense from your teaching that God is separating me because he wants me to be a savior and a deliverer. Whether you are in overflow one, two, three, or the main auditorium here. You've seen what God has done. You've heard the word. And you've known that it's not just about money and influence, but it's about the soul of men and the purposes of the kingdom. Wherever you are, you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time, or you are saying, Apostle, I just want to rededicate my life. Know that I need Jesus. Please, wherever you are, except for overflow three, because of time, I may request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But overflow one, two, three, run like there's fire on the mountain and make your way to the front here. I will want to lead you to Jesus. Quickly, one. I'll just count one to five and we're done. This is an issue of destiny. Two. Please clear the way for them as they come. Please be upstanding. Be upstanding because of space. Thank you. Please be upstanding. Three. Are you still coming? Win that war tonight. Make up your mind that I don't want my life to continue like this. Jesus is calling you. Rebels, don't, don't come to God. They run away from him. So that you're on your way, coming to Jesus is a sign that you're not a rebel. It doesn't matter what you have done or you have not done. If you come to Jesus, he will in no wise cast away. Overflow 2, are you coming? Quickly, quickly, make your way to the front. Those online following us from whatever nation of the world, you can connect. Making this prayer from the depth of your heart, you're not reciting a poem. I still believe there are a few more people that need to come. Please hurry up. Our time is gone. Let tonight be the night of destiny. Let tonight be the night of destiny. No one will force you. No one will beat you. No one will stop you. But you know it by the spirit that God is calling you. And you know that this is a Kairos moment. It's a defining moment for your life. Please make your way quickly. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. I want to th celebrate and thank all of you who summoned the courage to come here. Those at Overflow 3 and the thousands of people scattered around, around the nations of the earth making this decision. I want you to know that this is a real decision. You're not just reciting or chanting a poem. 
Jesus is here. He's ready to give you a new beginning. Are we together? Please raise your right hand and I want to say, to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the Son of God. This night, I have heard your word and I declare that from tonight and forever, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and the life of God. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these precious, precious people you have brought by your spirit to yourself. You have called them because you want to give them new beginnings from tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will protect and preserve them. That they will continue to go from glory to glory, loving you and serving the purposes of your kingdom. Lord, I pray by extension over the thousands and probably millions of people around the world who are listening right now and will be listening. I pray in the name of Jesus that this prayer that they make, let it translate into their salvation. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I pray that the keeping grace rests upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.